Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and as promised, I wanted to do a video on the events, the new stuff that we've gotten as far as uh, the Cetra story, Birth of the Destroyer event. Um, the ma mo Mostly, though, I want to go over the Maelstrom Tower, Chaos of the Corrupted, kind of explain how that works with the gear voucher system and everything else, explain the tokens that you get for the ultimate weapons and all of that kind of stuff just to kind of make it a little bit more palatable, easier to understand than having to go through all the notices and whatever insights I can offer on that. But first, I did want to give an update on uh, my the Cloud's Bahamut Greatsword. So, uh, also just kind of to be a little bit transparent because I know that I, I say things as far as like packs and this and that, what do I think are good, and then sometimes I still do something that I don't think is the best value, but if it makes sense for me, I went ahead and did it anyway. So after my video, I spent a couple of hours thinking about, you know, whether or not I wanted to go for that 3K uh, pull that, that was here. Uh, obviously it's gone because I did it, <laughs> but here's what I did. So I had the weapon at OB5, and I had about 134 parts from, you know, getting less than five star copies. I also had about 112 or so cloud non-specific weapon parts, maybe a little bit more. So I went ahead, I took it to OB6 and that got me thinking. So I decided to do this pull down here that was 3000 red crystals. And my my thought was this, if I get one copy, right? Because I had some, some packs in the shop at that time, there were two available that were 5,000 red crystals and you get a guaranteed copy of the sword. Uh, essentially, I, I started looking at things and I thought, okay, if I can get one more copy and take it to OB7, then I think that it would just be in my best you know, interest to try to take it to OB10. So I did that pull and I actually ended up getting two copies of the great sword. So after that, I uh, went into the shop and it was a limited time pack. I did buy one of the 5,000 red crystal packs to get another copy of that. So that took me to OB9. Then I went down here and I did purchase, um, oh, I, oh, one of these two. You can see here, stock one of two. So $60 for 8,800 crystals and this. And this gave me 150 uh, cloud weapon parts. You can see here, based on what I already had, I have 196. And so to kind of cap it all off and summarize for those of you who care, uh, this is where I, I ended up. I have OB9 and uh, I'm four cloud specific weapon parts from taking it to OB10. I will just go ahead and wait till I get those somehow. Uh, I know it's really tempting to just go ahead and do it, but I didn't feel like it was worth, you know, blowing a bunch of red crystals for four parts. So that is that. So the next thing I want to go over is the gear voucher that we got. And if you go into the exchange, it's not down here. It's actually up at the very top. First anniversary gear exchange. And here is a list of all of the different gear that you can get. You can get one of them. And I still haven't spent mine yet. Uh, I'd really like to see what we get for people like Tifa before I make this decision. Why? Because the only outfit that I really don't have for Tifa is feather style. And it's one that gives a buff debuff extension. So I would like to see, I don't think that Tifa is going to get something like, like a support weapon. I would expect it to be something similar to clouds, but that is just speculation. I have no idea. And if we did get something that was a really good buff debuff weapon, I would consider this for that reason. If not, then I am still, I think I've decided primarily between electro armor for Barrett and the Canyon duds for red and i'm i'll be honest i'm leaning towards canyon duds even though it doesn't give a uh, buff extension it's just debuff that is what i normally use red for i've been going for a lot of his double breach weapons and things of that nature and 60 percent without having to put in a buff debuff weapon is just such a big deal so that is what i'm really going for uh just another aside on this because i didn't it's something i didn't really address or cover i think in depth in my previous gear video uh edwards gaming corner he uh is a whale and he's a very very knowledgeable player he made a series of comments on my gear video i'm sure you could find them if you scroll through 
Uh, basically, he made a really long, well thought out, well articulated comment uh, about his take on what people should be going for, especially if you're a non whale and provides a lot of insight into why um, he thinks the way he does and, and how you should go about trying to make that decision. So if you haven't used your gear voucher yet, I would highly recommend going to that video, finding that comment and reading through it. I also replied a couple of times and every time he replied also with another like pretty good comment as far as, you know, pretty in-depth, big detail. And to summarize it for those of you who don't want to go find that and read it, uh, he was talking about the fact that, you know, even with whales, you can make up so much ground from debuffing and using your supports the right way uh, that Arcanums are not going to usually make or break your ability to clear any content. That simple. And so, basically, the... I don't want to like mince words here, but I think that the overall idea is that Arcanums are awesome. Everybody likes them. They're very popular, but they're a little baity, okay? They are not going to get you nearly as far if your account is lacking a lot of things as just getting some gear that will help a support. And that's why Electro Armor or Canyon Duds would be a great choice. Um, and then, you know, like I was thinking about getting the Arcanum for... Uh, Lucia for the earth and I am still lacking earth damage. However, I agree also that, you know, one Arcanum isn't going to just make or break my ability to do earth well, right? I don't have earth weapons really that built. I don't have anything at OB6. Now, if you already have an OB6 plus weapon with good supports, sure, that Arcanum might really just really jettison you forward. So I'm not saying don't ever pick the Arcanum. I'm just saying that I think uh, I agree with Edward's comments that it's worth putting in more thought to that and really analyzing your account to see what, what would really help you move forward. And that's all I want to say about that. Okay, so now looking at the tower. Um, oh, one last thing. <laughs> I said that's all I wanted to say, but I did have one more thing I wanted to say. If you had every single one of these outfits, if you're a whale, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that you couldn't do this as free to play, but I don't imagine. I think you'd have to be able to spend something to have every single one of these outfits, most likely. Um, but if you had them all, what do you get then? Uh, you get 10 mithril ingots. And that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, why is it a bummer? Because whales support the game more than anybody else do. Right? Uh, they're spending considerable amounts of money. And, you know, even compared to... A dolphin a lot of times like we're talking you know multiplicative amounts of money as far as you know they're they're usually most of them are in the thousands right um i think that's actually kind of what defines a whale after about a year and to only give them 10 mithril ingots for somebody that's gone through to spend on banners and pull and get every one of these costumes that's a letdown i think that they should get something a lot better for that because for us getting one of these gears is a huge deal normally having to clear an entire stamp page uh you know even people that have pretty amazing luck still take four pulls i think a lot of people are taking eight pulls right and so you're looking at tens of thousands of your crystals to get one of these so for somebody that has them all man i, I think we should offer them a little bit of something better than just 10 mithril ingots I know that's a little bit of a negative uh, thing to bring up, but I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, I think we should support whales or th the game should support whales a little bit more than that, because after all, those people are spending a lot of money. And I think, you know, they they, they should just be rewarded, I guess, for, you know, for having all of those things complete and not. And also the excitement, too, of, you know, we're excited we get a free gear, right? I mean, I'm super stoked about it. They didn't have to do that. Uh, but if I had them all, I would feel pretty let down. And I'm like, okay, 10, 10, myth, 10 mithril ingots? Hmm. Anyway, now I actually am finished with that. So as far as the new tower goes, kind of the way that this works is it's just like the regular towers where you keep going, you keep going, and you go all the way up to floor 50. 
And then every day, I don't know how long this will happen, but they add a couple of new tower floors. Okay, so you can see this one is unlocked until later on today at reset. Um, and I believe yesterday, floor 51 and 52 were open. So they're going to open like two floors a day. I don't know if that schedule will continue until they hit 100, but I know 100, or at least the belief is that one floor 100 will be the final floor. And then eventually there will be a uh, harder difficulty tower. So every time you clear one of these floors, you get two of these. Uh, and if you look in the rewards section, you can see. So two ultimate metal tokens, and ultimately you need a hundred of these tokens to unlock an ultimate weapon. So thus far, by clearing all of this, you should have enough to unlock two ultimate weapons. And I will go over which ultimate weapons I think would be the, the most worthwhile or what you should be looking into in a future video. I expect that will come out sometime in the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for that. As far as the difficulty of this particular tower, I did not find it difficult at all. Um, obviously, I, I do have a pretty strong account and have been playing the game since launch. Um, I did not adjust any team for any of this. So when I saw Ice, for example, I would just come over to my teams. I would go down to Sub-Zero, which is my Ice team. I plugged it in. I hit go, autoed through it, and it had no problem. I did the same thing for water, the same thing for lightning. Uh, because typically, if, if they're weak to two elements, you only need one of those elements to clear it, for the most part. Anytime I didn't see any weakness, I brought a physical non-elemental damage team and didn't have a problem. I would expect, uh, based on information I've been given from other players, that um, probably most people that have been playing since at least the Steam launch should ha not have any problem clearing at least the first 40 to 50 floors. Uh, if you're a newer player, don't worry. I mean, if you look, this is going on till October 28th. I think we're going to get a lot of stuff in that time. Some of it we're already in the process of getting. And so I think you will be given the tools or at least most of the tools uh, needed to kind of clear a lot of these floors. As far as those tokens go on floors 10, 30, 50, and 70 upon initial completion, I believe you get extra ultimate weapon tokens you also get these vouchers. This is where you get uh, things like the lightning voucher, right? Or the heal voucher, etc. And so if you go through, you can actually see them all. Um, for example, coming back down to floor 10, this is where you get the fire voucher, right? So all of the vouchers are also collected through this power. In other news, we have confirmed uh, I know I said it was kind of a rumor, but it is confirmed that Yuffie, Tifa, and Aerith will be the other characters featured on uh, draws that come out with, you know, limit break draws basically, or some other type of draw for the anniversary. And I do expect it to be in that order. So I'm expecting next week to have Yuffie, the following week to have Tifa, and then the last week to have Aerith. So plan accordingly. And this is what the outfits will likely look like. This is also going to be, I think, a wallpaper that we can earn throughout this event. But if you want to get an idea of what the outfits for those characters are going to look like, because again, I think they're each getting a weapon and an outfit, uh, you can see it here. I think that the theme is really cool. I really like, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, I mean, obviously there's bat wings, but it looks like a cat suit for Tifa. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be really happy with what they've done with this. And for anybody who's interested in the concept art, uh, you know, for what they were kind of looking through when making their final choices, uh, Tom Rom actually has some of that in the Discord. So if you're in there or if you join the Discord and you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, we have that there. All right, so I think that's about all of the stuff that I wanted to go through as far as updates, notices, and event stuff for this video. I do plan on doing an ultimate weapon video where I will go through those updates in the same video where I kind of review the ultimate weapons. So I know that that's not in this video, but it will be coming. Now, to go to the vouchers um, and kind of look through those briefly, uh, as far as these go, this, I mean, most of these are old weapons, uh, just calling it like I see it. Uh, Crystal Sword, Lifeguard Wraps, Fairy Tail, we had access to all of this by the first event at the latest, if not from launch. 
uh, Enhanced Sword Z Rubber Collar. Um, I can tell you for me, Centipede is an easy choice. I already have Fairy Tail at OB6, and while I am interested in taking it to OB10, I think first I would want to get Centipede to OB6. The difference between uh, 5 star and OB6 isn't huge. Uh, you get some more healing potency, but this will stack to high. The physical defense to everybody is always mid on first cast, but it stacks to high. Uh, also, obviously, you get some better R abilities. And so for me, uh, this is an easy choice. Coming down to the fire, uh, this one here is also an easy choice for me. Um, I think Sky Splitter is a fantastic weapon. I think Marine Shooter is pretty good. I mean, they all have their place, uh, but for me, this is Shell Knuckles. It's uh, my only version of Magical Fire that I've been working on, so that's kind of a no-brainer. For Ice, uh, it gets a little bit tougher for me, and I might actually leave this one for now. I have Bald Eagle at OB6, I have Edged Wings at OB10, and Holy Flame Gloves at OB10. So it's somewhere between the other three, and I just needed to decide whether I want something like Snowflake to help enable Aerith during those magic, uh, you know, battles, um, or magic ice battles, I should say, or if I want something like Spiral Shuriken uh, for maybe a sub weapon. So I haven't made that decision yet. I'm going to go ahead and wait on that one. For Lightning here, um, lots of good choices, and obviously Seaside Collar would would always be something I would consider for a Thunder Breach. However, there are perfectly good weapons. Thunderbird was one that many people commented on my Lucia video. Um, if I was going to go for a sub weapon, uh, I would probably be, probably be going for CC Alloy Sword because at OB10, 52 to lightning potency is huge. I can't think of any weapons that go beyond 52 for an R ability on elemental potency. Uh, and I think there's only like four or five weapons yeah, there might be more, but I can only think of maybe four or five in the game right now that go this high. So I would be going for that. However, Electro Cannon, when it's needed, is a huge, huge weapon. And the fact that at OB6 it stacks to high uh, on the physical attack part is really something that I'm going to be considering. The R abilities are also amazing. So I can tell you, based on my account, I'm between Alloy Sword and Electro Cannon. I do have a better than OB-1 Electro Cannon at the moment. So that's something I'm going to have to also kind of table. For water, uh, this is easy for me, but uh, just kind of some thoughts on this. I think Tempest is pretty interesting. It's got uh, water damage. It's also got a breach. And, you know, starting at OB-6, you've got a high potency water breach. I'm using uh, Red 13 for that. I've already kind of invested pretty heavily into that. So I'm not as... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, the flexibility to do different comps isn't good, but I'm not as big on that. Uh, and it maxes out at 700% physical water damage, which while I am kind of lacking some physical water damage, uh, that one is just going to be tabled for me for now. Slay the Day is great if you pulled on his uh, anniversary weapon, I think it was, and you have the, the big water hit. If you don't, uh, it feels like this is a, a little bit odd because you don't there's no way to just get access to that without waiting for the next banner where you can wishlist or get a limit break weapon for glenn uh so i'm not sure black whisker is always good but for me it's bunny gloves i have bunny gloves at ob9 i have spent a lot of vouchers a lot of weapon parts trying to level those up this gives me ob10 it's a big deal so that's what i'm going for as far as wind goes um Pretty interesting. I think Floral Wand is great. I would highly recommend considering that. Although I have Floral Wand at OB6. Um, I have Dark Heavens at OB10. Another consideration, especially for physical wind damage dealers. Diner Tray, also good if you like Yuffie. But for me, uh, Silver Collar is a no-brainer. Um, it's just something that, that I'm going for. And so that's what I'm gonna take here. The Wind Breach on that is just, is just valuable. Okay, last we have Earth, and this is another one that I am not prepared to make a decision on yet, mostly because, again, Earth is my biggest weakness. Holiday Revolver is tempting because it's my current highest leveled up one. I'm not really a Yuffie player, so I'm not interested in these, although I believe it's Hawkeye is quite good. Uh, OB10, 850% plus 1.2 times damage. 
it's always something that is worth considering. Uh, Chiron is also pretty damn good uh, because of the breach. Uh, Earth, Earth Breach, potency high starting at OB6, and I believe I have this around, I don't know, OB4, maybe 5 even, so that would be a consideration for me. But ultimately, because Sephiroth's weapon is not featured in here, and Vincent's main Earth weapon, which makes sense because it was limited, uh, I just haven't quite made the decision on what I want to go for yet. So, that's what I went for, or am considering, um, hopefully that helps you kind of make that decision. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.